it and everybody, no, it's me, it's me. And then they change barrels and it's like, oh my gosh, I should have taken that barrel off last year. Can a good shooter win with a bad rifle? No. Because you know how they always say, oh, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the likes of Jack Neary or Tony Boyer, they can win with a with a with an off the shelf rifle. And I tell them, no, no, the rifle is so important. Like, yeah, Here, here's words that I tell everybody. You know, we take too much credit when we're shooting well. And we also take too much credit when we're not shooting well. Right. If that barrel and that rifle is not shooting. You can't steer a bullet that's going 20, 30 thousandths in some direction out of your group. Just no way. If you don't know what's going to happen, you can't steer a bad gun. You right. can't do it, regardless of who you are. Now, if you have a very good gun and good hands, you know, you're, you're just going to kill people. It, it, it's going to take you to the top. And you can always tell in our game, we can see the guys that have got something that's really working, good barrel, good bullet combination. You know, they're riding the wave and they're working hard. Um, hey, that's it's wonderful to see. It's nice when you have it, but uh, fame is fleeting until you can, you know, try to replicate that or, or find your next good lot of bullets or barrels uh, and, you know, work that way. I think I won two Texas State championships in a row. And uh, somebody came up to me and said, man, I can't wait until your barrel gives out on you. And the next barrel was even better. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so then I want two more after that. But it was, I, it, you know, I, trust me, I knew like that was a really good barrel. Uh, mm -hmm. But I just got lucky enough that the next one was even better, which mm -hmm. brings me to my next question. How many barrels, Hummer barrels? Well, I guess it's a two part question. Do Hummer barrels exist? Yes, they do. OK, they okay. absolutely do. All right. Well, I, I want to get on that first. OK, number two. How many, can you imagine how many Hummer barrels have been put away thinking they were junk just because the shooter didn't know how to tune or just didn't know how to drive the rifle? Well, a Hummer barrel generally will take any load and will shoot really well. So I don't know that you can't really hide a Hummer barrel because they're going to jump out and they're just going to shoot. But I will say there's a lot of good barrels that people are not putting today enough powder in to stabilize the bullet, uh, particularly in windy conditions. The mm -hmm. biggest challenge a lot of the newer shooters have today is they're really afraid to put the hotter loads in that are required, particularly for bow tail bullets, which do require a little bit more powder to drive the bullet. And that's where people kind of struggle until they kind of get over that hump of, you know, afraid to put powder in, but uh, the Hummer barrels do exist. They are an anomaly. Um, years ago in like 2004, I had two barrels, the same lot number in, you know, the barrel wanted to shoot zero small ones at a hundred yards. It was just, uh, you know, I thought I was in heaven. I wished it would <laughs> last forever. And I made the 2005 U S world team with that barrel. And I always had the comfort and solace thinking, you know what? I've got its brother yeah. at home. And when this barrel wears out, I'm just going to screw on the other barrel with the same lot number and it's going to continue the magic. And after I did wear out that barrel about two years of shooting with it uh, in major matches, I put its brother on and that first barrel wanted to shoot zeros and small ones. It, it, uh -huh. That was it. There, there wasn't some anything really, you know, quarter inch group in that barrel if I did everything right. And the second barrel didn't want to shoot smaller than a two uh, wow. night and day difference. And, you know, I was just mortified and I'm like, oh, my gosh, look at this. Dude. <laughs> it's amazing to hear you say that a barrel that shoots into twos is, is, is junk, which is uh, goes back to to what you were saying about that. You, you literally cannot give anything up for any reason. Because uh, the, the 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 matches are won by, by such a small margin, right? Well, and you know, and again, a lot of guys in our game in short range bench press, and I'm sure this applies in F class. You know, if they would go the next note of powder going up, especially in windy conditions, 
in at 200 yards where our game is really won, they would find performance in their barrel they didn't know they had. I shoot with one guy locally, great guy, great bullets he makes, and he could do so much better. He's got a number of Hall of Fame points now, but he would have been in the Hall of Fame a long time ago if he'd just give his gun more powder. I'll tell him at the range on windy conditions when we're practicing, I'll load and you shoot. I arrived one day when he was practicing at 200 yards in the wind. The groups were all over complaining. And I won't mention the guy's name, but uh, I told him, I said, let me load for you and you shoot. And the gun went from shooting just blobs at 200 with vertical and moving around to really shooting dots. And he was just amazed at wow. the difference. What did you do? How much powder? I said, <laughs> can't say. <laughs> and, and still, he still, he, I struggle. He struggles to believe me and stuff. Did, like, you, oh. tell him? did you tell huh? him? Did you tell oh, him? Oh, constantly. We're, we're oh. always in argument of so well, much powder. So. Okay. Well, that's, that's, uh, okay. Let's get on this topic now about the notes, right? Because in mm-hmm. F class, we've actually kind of went the other way. Mm-hmm. We found that the uh, slower notes are more consistent. And maybe that has, now that you mentioned that, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking here, it's like, and maybe it's just because they're easier to shoot because the uh, less recoil, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it upsets the setup a lot less. And, and that's kind of what mm-hmm. I'm wondering now, if it's not what we're doing, right? That, that we're going, mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I mean, again, trust me, I, I take, Whatever you tell me, it's going straight to the back. And when you say that, I, I was like, uh, like I said, because in F class, we've all kind of went backwards. I mean, the 284s, mm-hmm. everybody used to shoot around 28, 30. Mm-hmm. Now they're all shooting about 2750 to 2770. So they, they've actually right. slowed it down about 50 feet per second. Mm-hmm. Uh, I used to shoot my Shehain. Around the 2930 mark, 2950, I was pushing mm-hmm. it pretty hard. And mm-hmm. now I'm typically in a 2800, 20, not 2800, but 2860, 2880. So mm-hmm. I've, I mean, we've cons- pretty much across the board, we've all kind of slowed down about 50 feet per second, mm-hmm. uh, which uh, makes me wonder uh, why we're shooting better slower. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't know. Uh, I'm going to have to try. <laughs> well, there's certain, you know, dynamics and physics dependent upon the game. And, you know, I would not ever pretend that I could consult or say what, what works best in F class or some of the long range disciplines. But I, I know this, that, you know, in short range bent trust, as the game has evolved, um, you know, we all shot lighter loads with N133 when I started in 1998. Um, uh, the hottest load people would generally use 29.8, 29.9. Um, I had a new Bartline barrel that I was shooting a week ago, Saturday at our local uh, range. And it just looks stupid, even 30.1, 30.3, which is <laughs> hot loads. And I'm like, I can either go down and nothing's going to be better, or I can go up and see what happens. And I went to 30.5, and it was like the rifle was shooting a hole at 200 yards. Wow. Night and day difference. Um, I can tell you story after story. Tony Boyer, several years ago, we have one of our largest matches in St. Louis, East-West. Tony won the two-gun, and his protege, Wayne Campbell, and a good friend of mine, Hugh Williamson, finished second and third in the two-gun. And they were all shooting 30.3, 30.2. And they thought that was the ceiling. Wow. Tony went out and went to 30.5 mm-hmm. and won the two gun. He started just shooting holes, small, tiny groups at 200 yards. Mm-hmm. And after the match, Tony came clean and he asked Wayne and Hugh, he said, what did you boys shoot load wise? Wayne's like, um, I was at 30.3, 30.4. Tony's like, why didn't you try any hotter? And they asked Tony, what did you shoot? He goes, I was at 30.5. And they were just like, you know, mortified that, you know, success (laughs) is so close away. We were at Calgary at the world championships 
And Tony Boyer spent a whole day with Wayne Campbell trying to get his gun working. He had a new barrel. And all day long, they tried every load they could. And Tony, out of exasperation, put 30.6 clicks of N133 powder in his rifle. And that rifle was shooting just little dots. Walt Berger ended up shooting the rifle because uh, Tony's wife, Faye, um, had you know passed away. And she was in the hospital, so mm -hmm. certainly he could not shoot uh, in Walt Berger, who was our team captain, uh, <laughs> volunteered to jump in. He took Tony's rifle and I loaded every load uh, for Walt for that weekend. And it was 30.5 for his initial uh, load in the morning where the air is heavier and you're building more pressure. But right after that first group, it was right to 30.6 wow. constantly. So we don't know what we don't know. And a lot of times, guys, and again, talking short range bench rest, they set ceilings up to where that rifle they think might be too hot. And it really isn't. They're just in between. Um, now, you can also be way too hot. And some days we're a victim of our own, you know, intelligence or our own pre, uh, pre knowledge of what we deem be right. And you may have to drop the powder down when it's really benign out, uh, where benign winds. But you've got to be open and resourceful that when things are not working, you have to read how your group forms and the bullet holes. And there is a science to looking at the bullet hole and the target. It will tell you what you may need to do. And 